In this video is an introduction to managing operations and the Atomic Automation Solution. By this, we simply mean the tools that operators rely on for the day-to-day -day business of running things and move through the schedule smoothly and without incidents. Eventually, issues like failures will occur. Operations serve as first responders in the remediation process. For this, we have a dedicated product environment called the Process Monitoring Perspective to manage active tasks. An active task is an executed instance of an object that is past, current, or future and is under the purview of supervision and control of IT operations. To support this activity, we can rely on three sets of tools. They are the available data. Each task has a status, say active or completed, an individual run ID, and a timestamp. High execution volumes can be searched using the filter tools. There are also documents to monitor specific executions. The job reports, which contains the standard output and error, graphical monitors for workflows, and the execution history, which is a comprehensive log of all executions for particular objects. Finally, operators can act. We will consider the various actions that we can apply to our tasks. There are hundreds of different possibilities for the status of a task. It is defined based on many factors, like the object type, execution type, system behavior, how the object was designed, if it has preconditions, and many more. The gray status is normal and describes anything active but not executing. Here we typically find completed tasks. The green active status group includes all statuses describing ongoing processes. This is usually normal. It includes active or evaluating preconditions. The red abend status group includes all incident statuses or anything that does not complete successfully. This is obviously an abnormal status and should be addressed. Blue statuses describe anything that is waiting. This is not necessarily abnormal, but it can be. Many situations can be included, such as waiting for preconditions. This indicates a precondition, such as a file watcher. Waiting for predecessor is another example. A workflow successor waits because its predecessor has not ended. The blocked yellow status describes tasks that should be executing but are not, often because of environmental circumstances. One example is a suspended recurring execution. Also, if you stop a client or a queue, processing stops and tasks are blocked. The block status is applied to unfinished workflows because not all child tasks completed. It's not abended, it's just blocked. Statuses in this group include stop clients, stop queues, workflows blocked, and so forth. Skipped is an OK status that shows up as white. A task was part of the overall plan, but was bypassed or skipped deliberately. Finally, any task deactivated either automatically in their attributes or manually no longer shows in the process monitoring perspective and is not managed by IT operations. It can only be seen in executions. The volume of contents displayed in the process monitoring perspective can be pared down using filters. These functions are intuitive. Filters can be applied on task name, type, status, and other criteria. We open the process monitoring and process assembly perspectives. We'll need both. We start with two job objects we prepared for this demo in the corresponding folder. In order to explain deactivation and show how to automate it, we have two jobs, WF deact yes, which deactivates automatically, and no, which does not. Let's open the one that does. Deactivation is simple. We want to keep our process monitoring perspective organized and tidy and avoid storing thousands of successful completions. It makes it easier to focus on the faulty executions. It keeps the database table small and improves performance. In the attributes of an object, we find the automatic deactivation function. If we set it to always or use one of the error-based settings, it means the object will deactivate when the execution is successful. Upon completion, it deactivates and is simply no longer on our radar. If we set it to never, which we sometimes do during the testing phase, 
The successful completion stays in the process monitoring perspective and we need to deactivate it manually. We use the control key on our keyboard to select both objects and execute them. Our two jobs execute. Let's right click on one of the jobs to display the context menu and actions associated with the job execution. We use the modify menu. For executing jobs, available actions are cancel, which abends the job manually, modify priority, which changes the priority of the job inside the queue vis-a-vis -vis other jobs, Modify the status manually, which changes the status, and is something that we do not recommend without a high level of expertise. Takeover task reassigns the ownership to the current user. You'll find these actions in many other object types. These jobs were set to sleep for 30 seconds. We refreshed after 40. The job set to deactivate automatically is gone, while the other is still there. Let's consider the documents associated with an executed job. We have the reports and executions. The report is a formatted log document which contains the standard output and error of the batch process. Executions track the historical occurrences of every execution of an object. We had executed this job twice before the demo, and so we have three executions. We now focus on workflow monitoring. In preparation for this, we've created a simple workflow. This workflow has two jobs. The first, we will cancel manually. The second has a dependency on the successful completion of the first. Let's show this. It shows WF depend can only start if WF cancel ends with a no okay case status. Any other status means the dependency is not met. Remember, we are going to cancel the WF cancel job manually. We'll consider what happens to the status of each job and of the overall workflow. Although the workflow task execution has some reports, they're not as interesting as the jobs, and so they're out of scope. The monitor, on the other hand, is something we cover. We can click the Open Monitor notification or the Last Monitor button. The workflow monitor is a powerful tool because it allows us to monitor the execution of the workflow in graphical formats. We see each job and associated status. The first is executing and has a green status. The second has a blue normal waiting status because it has an unresolved dependency. Note that as opposed to individual task executions in the PM perspective, the graphical monitor assumes statuses that reflect the overall status of the workflow. The blue status reflects the waiting nature of the job, but in the PM perspective, it would appear in the gray, in other words, not executing status, based on its own merits and unrelated to the workflow. We cancel the first. The job takes a yellow and not red manually canceled status. This is entirely consistent with what we explained earlier. 
The overall workflow is blocked, so the job appears as blocked. Let's show the PM perspective. Let's expand the yellow status blocked workflow task to show the two embedded job tasks. Again, it's consistent with what we explained. The PM perspective considers the status of the task on its own. It was canceled, and so it assumed a red status. The workflow is yellow or blocked. Likewise, the second job does not appear blue, but gray or unexecuted. These are the actions associated with a workflow. Cancel cancels the workflow but lets active tasks finish. Recursive cancels everything. Suspend will put a workflow on hold until it is released with the go command. Recursive works the same way. A downstream workflow task has commands like go immediately, which simply lets the task execute irrespective of upstream dependencies. A red status task can be restarted. We use this in situations where a job has to be fixed and then allowed to restart to let the rest of the process continue. 